coming right there. <laughs> All right, hey guys, I'm here with Randy Worth, retired Green Beret, another fifth group brother of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, Randy is a survival instructor, worst case scenario survival school. I don't know where you came up with the name, but all right, we're good with it. Uh, we've got a bunch of great survival videos that Randy has done. Um, uh, Special Forces survival experts, favorite cutting tools. Uh, he did another one on survival weapons that was dealing with... Um, he had his single six revolver, but it was 22 long rifles. And he had like, what, six bird shots, six regular bullets. And then he talked about air rifles and 22 long rifles and 22 magnum rifles, uh, all great weapons in a survival situation. You've got to feed your family and everything. Um, but one of the things that he touched on a little bit was uh, more primitive weapons, or if you don't have anything at all, if you've got to start from scratch, there are time-proven old weapons, older ones. And so Randy opened up a box of stuff he uses at classes, and I'm like, I got no idea what that is right there. <laughs> so um, welcome back, Randy. Um, I know that's called a wrist rocket. Yep. I re I've seen arrows before. I've sat through your classes. This is awesome. Let's share it with them. Where do you want to start? Start with the throwing sticks. When I wrote the classified Special Forces Survival Manual, um, first time I was able to get online with a computer and do stuff, so I looked up all kinds of things from all around the world, all different things they do for their teeth, for their hair, for maintenance. And then I looked up fighting weapons. I looked up survival weapons. I looked up hunting weapons. These types of sticks here, these are the oldest hunting weapons I could find, other than picking up a rock. Okay. All right. So on these, there's a couple things you need to know. You need at least two of them, all right? And they've got to be a solid, heavy wood, uh, Osage Orange, Oak, um, Hickory, something what like that. What is this one? It's heavy. That's Osage Orange. Okay. You can see the yep. coloration All right. Um, I'm not sure what this one, what this one, but it's got the weight to it. The trick is on these is you have two of them. You shouldn't have to throw this one because you're only wounding the animal. We're talking small animals. We're talking rabbits, raccoons, stuff like that. Do right? you stun them with that one? Stun them with that one. And you have to throw this sideways. You can't throw this this way. You have to, you have to take it. We did video, oh, no. you'll see me I throwing. I got a lot of breakable things in here, Randy. <laughs> you're throwing it sideways. So what you want it to do is the hit if calls the rabbit, you want it to spin and hit, even come this way and spin and hit and come around to it. All you're going to do is trip him up and hurt him. Then you take this up and smack him on the top of the head. As mm. you're running up, you could throw this one if you, if you just stunned it and you need another if one. If it starts to move again. Right, throw because the then you one. have your knives on your side, then you could come up and finish sticking it. All right, so. Yeah, you yes. jump on its back and just. Give it to him, yep. So the real trick in these is practice, practice, practice. It seems simple, but it's not. It is difficult to hit your target. And we used the stuffed bear that now is in my uh, supplies. <laughs> Thank you, Carl, for doing that. Valentine's Day, right? Right. You yeah. could use it. Uh, never know when you come up on a, uh, a raccoon or a rabid teddy bear yep. in the woods, right? Yep. You can feed family happen. on a teddy bear, right? Next, the, one of the oldest weapons, I, I didn't cover spears and I didn't cover uh, bows. Everybody has all kinds of bows. That said, if you go back in our video archive, Randy does have a whole separate video he's done for us on spears, but specifically ones for fishing, right. uh, different ways to make them. And that, that's one of my favorite videos. So, all right, so where are we going next? Bolo? Uh, I haven't been to South America, but South American gauchos, I met several of them, and they didn't give me their bolo, but they showed me how to use it, and it, I used to do, I was a healer in competition roping in uh, rodeos back home. So I know a how healer, to healer, you're, you're making the, the cows feel better. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. No, I'm, I'm asking. So no, you're no. the guy that actually throws the rope. I'm throwing it. The, they get the head, I get the feet. The healer. Okay. It's called the healer. Oh, it's oh, the healer. The, all right, yeah. okay. All right. I don't know these things, man. Okay. 
Sooty slicker. <laughs> Sooty slicker. So theirs are well balanced and are made with leather and they don't have rocks in them. They have more like sand in them. Okay. And they're very well balanced how they do it and they sew it. Out in the woods when you would have to build something like this, you don't have time for that. And we, even with pieces of leather, I was never able to duplicate what they showed me. So what I did was I looked around and said, well, that's going to be really difficult to do. So what I need to do is make it a different way. So these are elongated rocks. They're not round. If you look at all three of them, they're elongated, okay? Now the point of that is, is so that I can get the rope on there. And if you can see close, there's a small gutted 550 cord that actually t seals Making and ties it. Making it even this. tighter. Right. Yeah, okay. And then, because I use these all the time, I put a uh, goop on them. Goop, right? which is kind of like shoe goo, the, the stuff you can buy at uh, any department store for like gluing the sole of somebody's sneaker back on or something like that. Okay. And so, because they'll fray and you'll break. Yeah. So. The principle is the same way that you're going to throw a lariat. You're going to take one rock in one hand and it's Show us be, without breaking anything. Okay, it's okay. It, the longer one you grab here, right. these two, you're gonna have your fingers, see how my fingers are? And then you're gonna take it and you're gonna swing it around your head. And once you get it swinging- These are going around your head. Around my head, I'd let go of this one. All three of them are going. And then I'm gonna use this finger and I'm gonna point it sounds simple, but it's not. And what you're supposed to do is stop your finger where you want it to go. Okay, and today we saw how that can go awry on you. Now, Carl showed me something <laughs> that I use. I gotta show it to you because it works. Now you remember, you can only be about 10 yards, seven yards from your prey, maybe even five yards. You're, you're not a long distance. He took this bolo, he wrapped it like this. If you can see me do that, put it in his hand, and put it in the rocks. Him and I were both pitchers, and you use an overhand throw, right overhand like that, and it goes and they does They naturally the, spread out, and they wrap around the legs of the animal. Just the same as the bolo, and you have to practice hard to make the bolo hit what you want it to hit, and this will do it right there. The reason why I like the reason why I brought that technique up to Randy was there was a certain way to throw the old stick grenades in World War I, uh, but you notice come World War II, Americans started with stick grenades. Why did we go back to a pineapple and a round grenade? Because every American boy knows how to throw a baseball. So this was, it's just common sense to me. Yeah. It, it only it, took you, what? It works. The, the other 60 point years is to, to learn it? <laughs> yeah. I've been doing this since I was a kid, but you have to practice all the time. But the point is, with him showing me this, it's just like water filters, this 12-year-old girl that I've been building since I was eight, showed me a better technique in building my primitive water filters. We're never too old to learn, for sure. Yep. And he showed me this. You, ex If it works, you accept it and wish that we were smart enough to think about it the first time. Now. I, I don't shoot bows because I've got injuries in my shoulder really bad, so pulling a bow back, I'm not, I can't do that. I can't hold it back. So what I did was, when I was a kid, there was a guy that shot me, showed me how to shoot him arrows out of a slingshot. The difference was, there are different slingshots, but he would put his fingers up like this along the slingshot. I go on the back side so you can see. He put his fingers up like this, and then the arrow would go here, and then he'd shoot from there. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, sling, slingshots have evolved to yeah. this. Now, this is the, your modern wrist rocket that every good juvenile delinquent out here knows how to use. Right. Yeah. And they're stabler and stuff. Not, not that I was ever a juvenile delinquent. No. That's right. that. We'll leave that for another story. Now the difference is on these two. They're both 25 pound bands. They normally come with a yellow. Yellow, which, which is, is how many eight, pounds? Eight to 12 pounds. All right, now how do you order heavier bands? I go online and I, I say a slingshot heavy duty bands. Could you get them on Amazon? Yes. So it's you longer. could go to tacticalrifleman.com, click on my Amazon store, and uh, you could. Uh, you could buy the heavy bands for your wrist rocket. Uh, come think of it, Christmas, you could order that 
80, 85 inch TV there also. Guys, we're gonna have links for all these things uh, in the description under the video. Now, these are both the same pound bands, but take a look, put yours like uh, this. Yeah. Take a look at the leather pouch. Now online, I wasn't able to see the size of this compared to this. So the problem becomes in when you're shooting your arrow, not, not a rock or a marble, which we'll get into, it's hard to hold it. This is really easy to hold it to pull with. Now they have people on um, that have manufactured stuff that you can shoot your arrow off, but yep. you can't take it off and all of a sudden go and shooting a marble, regular right? Regular marbles, yep, okay. On mine, all I used was the bands that I got five sisters that put their hair up on those little rubber... Little hair band. Hair, hair band. bands. It's actually called a hair, hair band, bands. I think. And yeah. the wire that you do, your chain link fence to chain it to the post. But basically any piece of heavy gauge wire would work. Right. I put it on there, wrap that around, hook it in with the hooks down at the bottom. Yep. And now I'm able to shoot... Try not to hit the camera. Yeah. Yeah, the cameraman, okay, but don't hit the camera. Loading it is important, so you've got to mark your things with a mark with a mark yes, on it, so I you see know the got center. A center line on it. Grab it, pull it out like this, like I have it. Get it nice and centered. Then you're going to grab it like this, and I'm not going to pull it back. It has to be on this metal band. You have to have it okay. on there. You can't do it otherwise. I got people there. I can't pull it back toward them. And when you pull it back. It has to go back to the same spot each time. So mine is my cheekbone. When I pull it back, it comes to my cheekbone each and every time. And I look down the arrow. Now the difference between this shooting this with an arrow is you have movement this way, this way, this way, and this way. You don't with a bow, yeah. right? Because it's up against the yeah, bow yeah. and your string straight. Yeah. So you have to manage all that if you're off a little bit that's the direction yeah. it's going to go so it's not as you have to practice with this it's not as difficult as especially learning this but you need practice with it now because i use this all the time i put zip ties so these don't come off but in my survival gear i don't have zip ties on them so i use these this one like this and this i shoot marbles out of and I do demonstrations because these are perfectly round. For classes, you bring right. bags of marbles, but out in the field, you wouldn't be necessarily carrying 10 pounds of marbles with you. If you can see that, those are rocks I would pick up and shoot. Now I'm gonna go over these rocks a minute. Take this one a minute. They're close to this size, right? Now, if you can see this, this has a curvature it's larger here and gets smaller here so when i put it into my slingshot i have the smaller portion to the back to the here okay right so when it goes forward that larger portion so it won't tumble it'll go straight that makes sense to me when i have one that is flatter like this you can't get them real flat but like this and i can shoot it then i have to take the flat edges on both of them okay and i have to put it in the slingshot like this and it'll go straight if I do anything else different, it'll tumble or plane off. Plain off. Curve. Okay. But you try not to get them flat. Try to get them as round as possible or the shape, this teardrop shape, as you can. But in all my gear are marbles because they're really accurate. Now, having said that, uh, rabbits usually don't get up and go once I hit them with this. I can walk up and thump them with no problem. But squirrels, They'll be stunned, but you got to go up and finish them off. It doesn't, doesn't usually kill them. This, shooting the arrows, is different. They're not going anywhere. They may still be alive, but they're not going to go anywhere. Now, Carl bought me these, and I, I got some, um, and I shoot these. They're more accurate with the feather fletchings than they are with these, but the point is, with these smaller ones, it makes it faster. These are more accurate. But these are takedown ones, so they go together like this. Randy mentioned it in a class that they make takedown arrows because you understand Randy carries a folded up slingshot in the pocket on the back of his survival vest while we're out through in the woods. Yeah. He mentioned they make them. I'm like, well, Randy, why don't you have any? And I'm like, uh, he's like, well, I, I, I can't afford them. I can, I'm like, he's, it's retired Green Beret. I, I, now, now I know what to get Randy for Christmas. So anyways, I got Randy a set of six. 
You don't you don't bring all six out here. No. No. Okay, no. that's fine. That's so fine. now they go together, and you can see they're around the same size of the arrows that I shoot anyway, yeah. and they're the same. They're actually a little bit thinner, so they do fly straight, and they fly fairly fast. Yeah. These are a little bit faster, but these are thinner and a little bit lighter. These are. Now these, when broken down, lay right next to your slingshot. Yep. You can keep them in your vest. That's why you can't right. you can't carry okay. these unless you're going hunting with it. It's pretty tough to have a long arrow pack. Right. But look at that. And there's there's you the have three slingshot. four arrows, guys. That would go in a glove box of a of a ATV, let alone anything else. And I carry um, four of those in. I know there's okay. one additional thing that I did when I was looking up. Um, archers, there's a couple things that I learned I didn't know existed. They never shot right-handers on the left-hand side. Right-handers shot on the right-hand side, not on the left like we do now. Yeah, okay. And they would have their arrows in their hand, and then they would have a, a packet held here, and that's made to go on my belt and hang yeah. here. okay. And they would take it when they shoot it, and I can't do it, and they would grab another one and pull it from their fingers. They'd have like four here. In their, in their hand. Okay, right. that makes sense. Now, that's um, your uh, tr traditional uh, Native Americans, is that who you're talking about? Even, even uh, the Egyptians did that, even older cultures. This was okay. uh, a technique they used. The um, Mungadai warriors did that. Now, your scabbard here, your quiver uh, of arrows, uh, where'd you get that? Brownells, uh, Bass Pro Shop, no. where'd you get it? This was um, a picture that my or a poster that my wife ordered, and I took the the, the, the cardboard, cardboard tube off thing, of it. taped it, and then I put um, camouflage tape on it, and then I taped this belt to it so I could hook it up to my um, belt loops. This is the part you guys are gonna love because I've watched some teach this class a few times. Why is there a white cap at the other end? Okay. <laughs> Just before I get into this, my grandfather's from the reservation. And one of the things he taught me about arrows, I do not know how to make them. It's very difficult. But he asked me, do you know the difference between a hunting arrow and an arrow that they would go to battle with? And I said, no. Our ribs are up and down pretty much, right, Carl? No, they're, they're angled. Okay. They curve, yeah, okay. On a, on a deer, though, they're going this way more. Actually, than they're a, more vertical. Right? <laughs> so on a human, the arrow, the, the arrowhead is this way on a human. Okay. To go into you. On right. an animal, it faces this way. Okay. And that's the difference. I didn't know, they do that by how it lines up on the fletcher. Yeah, okay, all right. Now, having done that, if I want to go a bigger game, I'm not going to use one of these, right? Yeah, field points. So you thread the field point off. I took right. a pill bottle, glued it in there, and inside there are four of these small um, little one-inch broadheads, broadheads. razor blades on them. Now about okay. seven, maybe seven, six yards. I was up in my tree stand, and these came right below me. So whatever that distance is. A yearling came there, was old enough for me to shoot. It wasn't a fawn. Yeah. And I had my black powder, and I had this, so I went ahead and he shot him with this. <laughs> okay. It, it went in nine inches. Um, he jumped. It, it was a little buck. He jumped, and he ran off about 25 yards, and I had my binos, and I watched him, and I waited till he bled out. And it has to go in at least nine inches to do the damage yeah, yeah. you want. Yeah. So you can't be at 25 pounds, you can't be much further than... Yeah, you guys understand with a slingshot, even with the 20 pound band on it, you're not passing the arrows through the animal like a modern compound bow will. Uh, that is very awesome. I just thought it was ingenious to uh, uh, put a small container on the bottom for broadheads. <laughs> that's crazy. That's No, but uh, that's why I love you, Randy. That's why I love you. All right, um, next step up from this is literally air guns and things like that, right? Right. Yeah. We cover that in the other video. All right, guys, um, real quick, uh, Randy, always awesome having you here. Uh, I've seen him show up uh, at events and he just got his little photo vest on and the, the boy wanders the world like Kane from Kung Fu, completely from head to toe, blades, candles, and weapons in every orifice. 
You <laughs> are a, an anomaly on the planet, and I just consider it an honor to uh, call you a personal friend. Oh, I can see that too. Uh, and this guy's a wealth of knowledge, guys. When he said, uh, you understand when people say, Randy wrote the book on survival, he's literally the guy that wrote the survival portion of the U.S. SOCOM uh, SEER manual when they updated it. Uh, what year was that, Randy? Uh, 2005 or 2006, wow, I forget. crazy. All right, um, parting words of wisdom when using these primitive weapons besides practice. Uh, go out, find the hard woods, um, get yourself, I like the, I've been using bottles and cans. I like the teddy bear he gave me. Uh, get something that resembles the animal and start practicing with it. Your most effective one and smallest one in reality is gonna be your slingshots, okay? So practice like heck with them, get good with them. Get good with your marbles, and when you get good with marbles, get rocks and see what the difference is on them. But it's just like our shooting, it's practice all the time. Um, there's That's nothing, there's, anything that you can improve on that I've shown you, do that and I'd like to know about it. So exactly, yep. There's nothing, nothing embarrassing or wrong, and I don't take anything to, to heart as somebody does. I think how smart that person was and how dumb I was actually on it, because so, I've been doing this forever, and he showed me, I'm like eight years old, I've been throwing that damn thing. All right, so leave the comments below. I'll, if you've got questions, I'll get them to Randy, ideas, uh, things like that. Uh, always a pleasure. We'll see you guys back next week. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.